Welcome to another episode of last week's comics. Today I've got a pretty sizable stack here. We're going to start this week with Napalm Lullaby. And it's gorgeous and a great read. And uh, we learn more about this guy here. And we learn about these people that were behind that gate. And it's well done. And I'm enjoying it. And I don't have much else to say. It looks great. It's a good read. And I'm looking forward to more. Uh, the world is crazy. And I'm just enjoying the hell out of it. And I'll also say that I recommend it. But yeah, other than that, I don't have much to say. It's great, and like, yikes. But, I, but just read it. Just read it. Doom, on the other hand, I do have a lot to say. Sanford Green on art, Jonathan Hickman writing, and um, I hear, I heard... That this is unrelated to anything that's happening with Doom or Galactus or Avengers or anything else. It is definitely, a, I don't know, probably out of continuity one shot, but it is well done. I largely enjoyed it. I could tell a story about Sanford Green, and instead I'll just say that I like his work and I am somewhat surprised in a good way that other people like him as much as they do as well. I thought he was like. Not an unknown, but I, I didn't know that he was sort of the draw that he seems to be. I also like the, the shared credit, so I don't know how this broke down, but uh, this is nice too. So this is, it's a Doom versus Galactus story, and it starts, it starts after the fight already took place, and it ends sort of before the rematch. It's pretty crazy. Um, we get Doom versus Galactus, and through a series of flashbacks, we see what happened. We see what happened to literally everyone else. And there's... It ends... I said it ends before the rematch, but I think if you read... If you really pay attention, you sort of know what happens, because it ends on almost a cliffhanger. It seems incomplete. And I'm reminded of... Um, there was an interview from Mignola where he was talking about uh, he had to kill Hellboy a second time because nobody paid attention the first time he did it. And that's what feels like happens here. You can figure out what happens to the best of my knowledge, except it doesn't seem to be on the page. You have to, you have to pay attention. You have to read into it. And um, it's, it's there. It's just weird. The art, however, is absolutely phenomenal. It's full of energy. It's glorious to behold. It's uh, really something. I wonder if we're going to get a <laughs> this version of Doom from Hasbro at some point. That'd be nuts. Anyway, uh, it's, it's as I said, it's really something. I think you need to read it for yourself. But, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm otherwise at a loss for words. I I enjoyed it. And I think other people are going to have strong opinions one way or another. And I think everyone should read it on their own and form their own opinion. I'm in the camp that I enjoyed it. Dark Ride, issue 12. This is the end of the series. And I guess, so when Dark Ride started, I thought it was going to run for 50-ish issues. Uh, similar to their previous series, and then I learned that it was ending much sooner than I expected, and I'm like, well, that seems odd, but then a bunch of things happened in the story, and I'm like, okay, well, yes, you, you ramp things up sufficiently, so, I, I don't know, it still feels like something that could have gone on for much longer, although if this is the story that they set out to tell, then that's fine. It ends, interestingly, it doesn't end how I would have expected, but it makes sense for the characters, I'll say. One thing seems a bit odd, but if, you know, I think about it, then it does make sense. It's, um, it ends, it's, it's satisfying, is what I'll say. And if you're curious, then you can get the... I believe what will be two trades and probably a single hardcover collection of this, but I enjoyed this as well. I'm happy to say that I was wrong 
about my suspicion about this issue. So we've got Batman Dylan Dog issue three. Issue two was half of it. Um, Constantine teaming up with Dylan Dog on a trip to hell, and I thought, I suspected that we would wind up seeing the mirror image of that. Uh, Batman on his own investigation for half of this before they re-team and tackle, you know, the enemy together. That's now what happens here. It's, it's, the focus remains on Dylan, which I think is a strength. It is very well executed. There is still Constantine in it. We get uh, a pretty great scene with Commissioner Gordon and Dylan Dog. It's, it's, re it's really good, and I'm happy that I'm wrong. I am wrong on a regular basis, jet fire, but um, this, I'll probably get the hardcover collection of this as well. It's, I, I honestly, this makes me want to read more Dylan Dog. It's really well done. The art, the writing are both phenomenal. This conversation about eating, it's, it's great. Just Dylan interacting with all of the DC characters, every moment of, of it is phenomenal. It's really good. Art's amazing. Writing's great. Recommended. I loved it. I would have read more. If this... I would have read more. That's all I'll say. The Weatherman, issue 5. The two previous volumes of The Weatherman were each a six-issue series. I believe this one is seven, so we've got two more to go. A lot of things are coming to a head here. We get basically three separate fights this issue. And uh, some people die, one of them you want to see dead, and one of them you don't, and uh, it's, there's a lot going on, we get uh, check-ins on some previously seen people, it's, it's, it's fantastic, it's, it's really good, I'm a huge fan of the Weatherman series, each volume, this one in particular, everything that has been building towards this for so long, uh, we've got, where are they? These three heading into the base and they all face off against individual opponents. And there's one of them. Oh, what happens to her is just insane. Uh, there's, oof. It's, it's crazy. It's crazy. I, this is another one where I think you should just read it. I don't want to talk about it as much. Uh, we get this kind of heavily silent fight going on here. The art's amazing. Art and writing, both amazing. I love it. I'm a huge fan of The Weatherman. I will praise it at every possible opportunity I get. Please read this. I don't want to talk about... I'm probably going to say very little about the next two issues, except for gushing. Hopefully I'm correct in this prediction. Um, hopefully it finishes strong. But uh, I don't want to say too much. I just want you to read it for yourselves. Uncanny Valley issue 2. I was a big fan of the first issue. I was sort of uncertain when just the previews came out, but then that first issue was super strong. Very well executed. Issue 2, things get explained, and there's a, a dark shadow growing, I'll say. There's hints of something. I mean, there's actually a lot of hints that, that not things are not as they seem. And uh, it, it sets up a lot of intrigue. Uh, why she's fine serving a tune is one of those things that gets explained. Um, the contrast of art styles continues to be, I think, fantastic. We get frames like this where there's you know, a, a severe clash. Um, we get as well, let me find this panel. So this guy shows up. Oh my god. It's, it's, I'm going to say it's not as cartoonish as it appears to be. There's a level of seriousness to this that is appreciated. This could have gone a very cartoonish route, and it's, it's just very well executed. This craziness, when that happened, I'm like, oh shit. It's, it's very well executed. Things are explained. This is a, six issue series I believe but um, I'm loving this here's a random one this is the free comic book day issue of Popeye and I re 
This is pretty insane. Um, I think fans of stuff like um, One Punch Man, I think, are going to appreciate this. There's a heavy manga influence, and uh, it's it's weird, but it's also pretty good. I'll say. Um, the panel I have a problem with this is 24 hours ago. It feels like it should be 24 minutes ago. It's because um, she shows up here. There's three or four conversations that happen, and then a fight breaks out, and it it seems like much less time than 24 hours. Because it I don't know. It's it's weird. But um, let me flip past this. This guy shows up. And then it's, like, if you can't tell already, there's, there's like, a heavy anime manga influence here. And it, it takes its time in getting to the Popeye versus this guy fight. It, it lets Bluto sort of get his time to shine. It's very sort of Dragon Ball Vegeta-ish holding back Goku before... Uh, bringing Goku into the fight, and then once like, there it is, it's happening, and then the preview sort of ends. But uh, yeah, it's I think it's it's Popeye for the manga crowd, and I don't know how big that audience is, but it's pretty well done. I'm genuinely surprised. I don't know if I'm into it enough to actually spend money on it, but I will say that this is surprisingly good. The Untold Destiny of the Foot Clan. And the title is starting to make more sense. There are references in this to what seems like a previously established Untold Destiny of the Foot Clan. And what has been happening specifically with the Dog Clan is explained here and there's a possibly major seemingly major level up for one of the characters we also get this flashback that uh, goes back to the root of the foot clan to Orokusaki back in you know feudal japan i don't remember exactly when he was um it's very well done there's there's a lot of information here and it looks great and uh Santa Luco is allowed to go crazy in uh, some of this. It's not quite a dream sequence. It's more like an afterlife sequence. I still don't understand Casey being there, but whatever. Uh, I'm just okay with the fact that there's stuff that I didn't read, and I don't know what's fully happening, but it also looks great, and it reads well, and I'm into you know those things when it comes to comics. So this is good. It's, it's, the story is obviously progressing in a well done way and I'm digging it. I Heart Skull Crusher issue three. I believe this is a five issue series. So there's only two left. And in this, we get to the first real tournament match. And uh, it seems like there's a lot of story to go and only two issues to get done in and I don't know how that's going to get pulled off unless they sort of time lapse some of these matches but <laughs> here's their new goalie it is literally a bear a mutant bear and uh no it's it's not a, <laughs> they say it's a mutant bear man it's it's straight up bear and there's talk about this hat that's on his head backwards it's uh it's 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 hilarious it's pretty great and it's also completely ridiculous but uh, we do get that match that I spoke about. We get um, a test of their coach here. We see the other team, and I don't fully understand why uh, this guy in particular, why multiple characters um, have it out for our lead. And um, I'm sure that will be explained, but it is... It continues to be heartfelt, over-the-top ridiculousness, and it is well executed in the same style of much of the rest of the stack. It's well written, art's great, and I'm having a great time reading it. But uh, we do get to this final page where a lot is said about what will be happening coming up, 
and uh, that's, I think, great tease, enticement to keep going, but um, this... I'm still enjoying it, much like the rest of this stuff. Fish Flies, issue six. This one, I know, it's a seven-issue series. There's only one to go, and this explains a lot of what is happening in the present by showing a pretty lengthy, and this surprised me, um, flashback sequence. I didn't, I thought Lemire wrote and drew all of this. I didn't realize that uh, he got someone else to do some art. So this whole flashback sequence, it explains what is happening with the fish flies in the present and throughout the last, I'll say, a couple hundred years. But um, it's really well done. It's punctuated by occasional use of color and it's it's really well done it is less weird than some of the previous issues it <clears throat> it's a tiny bit reminiscent of uh, Stillwater as far as this flashback sequence and explaining what has been happening it's well done I that's all I can say well done lastly I got the Isun Boshi soft cover so I, I noticed this in previews quite a while ago, I'm going to say last year, and um, I chose not to get it at the time, it was a hard decision to make, but um, I wanted to get through some of the other stuff that I had before adding you know new cool looking things to it, and then much later, much more recently, I've been working my way through the Ink Pulp podcast on YouTube. And uh, they talked about this and how great it was. And I'm like, well, now I have to get it, of course. So uh, the soft cover just came out and I grabbed it. I started reading it last night. I'm only a few pages in, but I will say um, it's about this six inch samurai. It's, uh, it's pretty amazing. It's off to a great start. I flipped through it a tiny bit so you can see here. A sample of the art. It is mostly this grayscale, but uh, I'm really dinging it. There's a part. You know that you will never look this good doing anything at the time he's riding on top of an owl. It's uh, it's funny. It's it's off to a great start. Is all I'll say. I will do a video on this as soon as I finish reading it, but that might take some time. So, uh, and I've already got a few of these things scheduled, but I will get to this as soon as I can. So that is everything that I got this week. As far as pick of the week, I have no clue. Um, Uncanny Valley, all of these are in contention, I'm going to say. I'm just going to give it to all of these. Um, Batman, Dylan Dog, Weatherman, and Uncanny Valley. All great books this week, but really this whole stack is full of winners. Napalm, Doom, Dark Ride is a great ending. Um, it's all good. So... Um, Yeah, there's the three-way pick of the week. Um, that is everything that I got this week. As always, I get my books from a local comic shop. If you don't know where yours is, you can use this URL to find the one closest to you. Thanks for watching.